A report published by the New York Times under the title Mohammed bin Zayed, the ambitious partner of the United States, rises to lead the Emirates, in which Ben Hubert stated that Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan became president of the United Arab Emirates in an event that formalized the rise of the 61-year-old Sheikh, who defly used his country's oil wealth to become one of the most influential leaders in the Arab world and a close partner of the United States. I think it's a very good sign that the New York Times has changed their tone on Mohammed bin Zayed. Uh, in 2020, they had an article about, about what they called his very dark vision for UAE based on their interpretation of the war in Yemen and some other activities. Uh, I think what has become very clear, especially given his steady stewardship of the country, uh, during the pandemic and that crisis, I actually was there for a number of weeks in the summer of 2020 and saw it firsthand and there was no panic and they got vaccines to people quickly. Um, and I think he is really seen as a very steady hand on the wheel. I mean, remember UAE, this, he's only the third president in the history of the country, it's still a very young country. Um, but I think the, he ha enjoys the confidence of his subjects who have seen just enormous prosperity during uh, the period of his de facto leadership. And, you know, it certainly has been impressive to see how UAE is strategically reaching out to partners across the region. We would very much like them to continue to reach out to the United States, one area of great concern for both the previous administration and I understand the current administration is the degree of UAE outreach to the People's Republic of China. And I think everyone needs to be very clear with them that, that particularly in the post-Ukraine world, there's going to be a, some degree of decoupling, particularly in high tech, which is an area I know UAE is particularly interested in. Uh, and so I think making sure that message is conveyed and that the UAE knows that uh, MBZ and the whole country have a solid partner in the United States is critical. Sheikh Mohammed has established close relations in Washington by providing the services of the UAE and its armed forces to assist in Western military endeavors in the region. Emirati special forces were deployed alongside U.S. forces in Afghanistan, Kosovo, Somalia, and Libya, and the UAE was a member of the international coalition formed by the United States to fight the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. I think this is an inflection point in the relationship that the United States has, not just with UAE, but with the entire region. And I think it's an opportunity that should not be lost. Um, I do realize that the president and the vice president have made statements, and I think the, the vice president will be there for the funeral. But I think we need to look forward from this point and recognize that UAE and a number of other countries in the region are very strategically important to us. They have historically been friends of ours. Uh, I've spent time in UAE and half of the region, and uh, and my my gut tells me that we need to take advantage of this opportunity now, or uh, as they say, if you pull your fist from the bucket, it fills in really fast behind you. And uh, Russia wants to be there, and China wants to be there, and sources of instability want to be there. And so look, you, you can't you can't delay. You know, uh, those who hesitate are lost. And I think that means that what you do is you look at this and you say. Uh, UBZ is a transition that we need to say, thankfully, is a is a peaceful, strong, positive, and, and ultimately can be positive for the United States and all Western uh, allies. And I think that this is just one of those strategic moments where you step up, you don't step away. In August 2020, the UAE established full diplomatic relations with Israel, making it the third Arab country to establish formal relations with the Jewish state and the first new country to do so in 28 years by signing the Abraham Accords. By the way, let me just extend uh, my condolences uh, to the nation and the leadership of uh, the United Arab Emirates on the, uh, the passing of uh, Sheikh Khalifa. Of course, it doesn't mean a big transition because the cr then crown prince, now the president, uh, Mohammed bin Zayed, whom I've met with, we spent two hours with, uh, I've gotten to know him and his team quite well. And um, I think he is an extraordinary leader who is, he, you know, it's MBZ who's responsible for the huge economic growth the mission to Mars, the mission to the moon, the Abraham Accords, uh, bringing 
uh, the first ever evangelical delegation to the UAE that I led, and then a few months later, bringing Pope Francis, first time a Roman Catholic pope had ever set foot um, uh, and openly held a mass in the Arabian Peninsula. So uh, MBZ is a, an extraordinary leader. Now, a very behind the scenes, quiet strategist, and you know he's not doing interviews, he's not going on television. His meeting with us was off the record, okay? But in that meeting in October, 2018, I said, look, Christians are praying for peace. Uh, and we have not seen an Arab leader step forward and make peace with Israel since King Hussein in 1994. That's almost, there's a whole generation that's gone by. Who is going to be the next Arab leader? And he leaned forward. I can say it now because it's now they put it on the record. He leaned forward and said, Joel, it's going to be me. We were shocked because this meeting was off the record. And now he opened up. Why is he ready? This Remember, this is two years before the Abraham Accords. So he's trusting an Israeli, an evangelical, a group of evangelicals to not leak the biggest story in the Middle East in terms of peace in a quarter of a century. And we held that. We did, we did not betray his confidence. And sure enough, he kept his word. And uh, I'll give you a little scoop, Maria. I, I'm wondering, I think it's possible that MBZ is coming to Israel when President Biden comes in uh, next month. In, in, I have a feeling that what Biden is cooking up is a regional summit. Sheikh Mohammed's relationship with President Joe Biden was less smooth as the UAE worried about the sudden withdrawal of the United States from Afghanistan and the speed of the Taliban's takeover of the country. Emirati officials have told their American counterparts that they feel that the United States has done little to protect the UAE and Saudi Arabia from attacks by armed Iranian proxies, and they have raised questions about the long-standing American commitment to ensuring the security and protection of the Gulf states. Yeah, 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 here's the here's the bottom line. Um, during the campaign, Biden was quite negative about the the Gulf countries. Uh, you know, Biden was putting all of the focus on on human rights and democracy and things like that. Once he became president, I think reality has set in, and he realizes that there's a lot more to you know, United States interests and relations than just focusing on one side. Every American administration runs into this issue of where do you balance, you know, between pursuing human rights and democracy and pursuing the world the way the world is, especially with, you know, the uh, the petroleum shortage, the energy sh shortage, the, the Ukraine war. Uh, all of a sudden, the U.S. administration realizes how much more they need the Gulf kingdoms than initially thought. So, you know, there's been a change in policy. It's very rational. And this administration will have to figure out where that line is between pursuing, you know, the human rights agenda and also pursuing what is called real politics. Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed personifies the wisdom of how nations move through higher stages of political and economic developments. The validity of the Emirates' foreign policies is expressed through the continuation of the Abraham Accords and in helping the Palestinians secure their rights. In ending the civil war in Syria, his foreign policies will be operating in a tough international atmosphere with the enmity between USA and Russia intensifying. So I've always been impressed with Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed. I mean, he's been a very courageous ruler. He has tremendous plans for the Emirates. I think that's not going to change. I think the foreign policy that he established from when I first engaged with the Emirates in 2017, we've seen many of the fruits of what he's done. The Abraham Accords is one of them, and that was a very courageous move by him. He's obviously uh, operating in a very difficult environment, a very tough environment, generally speaking. That's only been even more complex because of what's going on with Russia and Ukraine. Uh, but I think he'll navigate through it. I think he has a tremendous vision for the United Arab Emirates, which fits nicely in the region. Um, I am just tremendously excited about the promise that the Emirates shows. I think it's great that Sheikh Mohammed is now the president. Um, and I'm also very much in favor of just about all of his policies and where he's taking the Emirates 
And um, I think America realizes that the Emirates is a very strong and important ally of the United States of America. And it's critical that we continue to maintain that friendship and that ally uh, relationship. Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed has the ability to communicate with the world to highlight the mission of the United Arab Emirates toward humanity in its totality. This leads naturally to the policy of the good governance for the people of the UAE and for the people of all the nations in the world. I'd like to congratulate His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed on becoming the third president of the UAE. He follows in the giant footsteps of his father, Sheikh Zayed, and his brother, Sheikh Khalifa. He has been a proven leader for the past eight years and beyond, not just in the UAE, but across the entire Middle East and the world. While many leaders talk the talk, Sheikh Mohammed walks the walk. The UAE has achieved great successes across every imaginable field thanks to his leadership and wisdom. The UAE today is a bastion of tolerance, coexistence, stability, prosperity, and opportunity. With Sheikh Zayed as president, the sky is no longer the limit. The year of 50 was just celebrated, showcasing the remarkable achievements of the last 50 years. Sheikh Zayed is now taking his vision into the future with the projects of the 50. He'll continue the stellar trajectory he has laid out for his great nation, from building the knowledge base to connecting cities and the seven emirates with world-class railway transportation infrastructure to an interplanetary space mission. The bottom line is that the next 50 years look just as bright as wondrous as the last 50 years with his leadership. Hey, Maria Malouf here. Please click to like and subscribe to Maria Malouf TV YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.